Do you ever feel like there's just not enough hours in your day? You've got a big event you're preparing for and you've got so many things to do and you just don't know if you're gonna get it done in time? Well, that's how I'm feeling right now, guys. Over the last couple weeks, I've been doing a ton of work on the Jeep and I've got some really cool stuff to show you that's done, but I've still got a lot more to do and I wanna tell you about what's coming. I don't know if I'm gonna get it done in time, but fingers crossed, stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and wow, things have been so crazy over the last couple weeks, getting ready for some very cool events. So I'm leaving here in about 48 hours, and I'll be meeting up with Jeep Magazine to do the Jeep Dirt and Drive event. Then we're going all the way up to Moab, and I'll be up there for Easter Jeep Safari. And then I've got a big trip planned on the way to Overland Expo, and then we will be at Overland Expo for that full event. And there's been a lot of work that I've been trying to get done on the Jeep. We're talking tires, the suspension, and the new rooftop tent, and a couple other things that we'll talk about in the video today, but just getting it all done in time has been nuts. And so today in this video, all I wanna do is just give you an introduction to some of the upgrades that I've done. This is not a review, so to speak, because you guys know I like to do long-term reviews because to me, quality and reliability matter. I just wanted to show you what's been done. So when you see the Jeep in some upcoming videos, you'll have an idea of the upgrades that are there and you'd be like, oh yeah, that's right, he fixed that, he updated that, it, that's new. So uh, we're just gonna give you initial impressions today, guys. So let me, uh, let's go talk tires and suspension. I think you'll enjoy this. So a recent video that I published was regarding the review of the 37 inch BFG all-terrain tires that I was running for well over a year. And in that video at the end, I mentioned that I was switching back to the Cooper STT Pros. Now I had previously ran these tires in a smaller version, a 315, which is like a 34 and a half. And I ran those tires for a long time and they performed really well off-road. In fact, I did the Rubicon Trail on those tires and I was very pleased with them. However, over time, they got a little noisy, they got a little rough on the road. And that was the reason for switching to the all-terrain tire but after time, I realized I really missed the aggressive traction that these things have. And so that's why I've switched back. And this time we're in a 37 and these are a 12.5. I elected to not do the 13.5 just because it's a lot of added weight. And I have already noticed the weight uh, on these 37s versus the uh, BFG KO2s. These are definitely a little heavier. And when I step on that accelerator, uh, it's noticeable. Now, one thing that I wanna point out because I've received this question a lot already since posting that I went to these tires. These are not the tires that I ran when I was in Baja about a year and a half ago that failed. If you remember, if you saw that video, I had a tire that I was just put on the Jeep and the tread started to separate. It was not these tires. It was another manufacturer that I'm electing to not name uh, because I know they're working hard on getting their quality better. Uh, but I just want you to know that it was not these tires. I have been very happy with these tires. And now that I'm running them in 37, you know, maybe a few thousand miles from now, we'll talk about how they're performing really well. One cool thing, these are an inch and a quarter taller than the BFG KO2s that I had. You know, those did have about 40,000 miles, but these are already sitting taller. Uh, and the other cool thing is now with this new suspension, the Jeep is even up higher. Let's talk about that new suspension. And now to talk about something that I am really excited to put through its paces, and that is my new suspension setup. So I have done a, a hybrid suspension setup working with the guys over at Icon Vehicle Dynamics. And what I mean by hybrid is we've elected to go with a coilover in the front, which I'll talk about here in a second, and a coil spring in the rear. And talking with those guys, that was what they recommended for me. Because I mentioned that, you know, look, I like to go do some rock crawling and get a little flexy, but I also like to, you know, put some weight on the Jeep and we like to do some long distance expeditions. And so I needed something that kind of fit both worlds somewhere in between. Uh, and that's why they recommended this. If you put a coil in the rear and you throw all that weight on the back, you know, a tent or if you're towing something or all refrigerator and all your camping gear, it just doesn't perform as well as the coil spring. Now, some of you are probably asking, Brad, why did you swap out your suspension? Well, my suspension just wasn't performing uh, the way I wanted it to. You know, the shocks weren't matched with the spring rates I had, and I had swapped a couple components out and was starting to become a little bit of a Frankenstein lift. I mean, it was durable, it was holding up okay, but the ride quality, both on and off-road, just, just wasn't doing it for me. I needed something better, I wanted something better. And I think this is perfect already. I mean, we're only about 200 miles on there and a couple miles here up on the trail on this, uh, but so far, 
huge difference. I mean, huge. I didn't expect it to be so dramatic. So what we've got up front is a full coilover setup with remote reservoir. It's got adjustability on there. And their coilover system comes with all the bracketry that's completely bolt on, which makes it really simple to install. It's a little time consuming. We had to do a little bit of trimming on the plastic up top. And one thing that we ran into was I've installed sea gussets on my Jeep and their brackets are made to install, you know, on a stock Jeep. But when you install sea gusset, it kind of gets in the way. So we had to do a little bit of trimming and modification, but we made it all work. We replaced all of the control arms front and rear. And in the rear, I mentioned we've got a spring, which is a linear spring. And then there's their 2.5 inch shocks with uh, the remote reservoir. It's a great setup so far. I've also got the hydraulic bump stops up here in the front, which I haven't put through their paces yet, but they will definitely get tested when we get to Moab. And I've also uh, installed their front steering stabilizer. I think this is gonna be an awesome setup. And when we get back from Moab, I'll definitely do a follow-up video and we'll talk about how it performed and what settings I you know, decided to dial everything in because you know everything's pretty much adjustable. Uh, I'm really looking forward to putting this through its paces. Now, let's talk about what's up on the roof. So it's only been about three or four months uh, since I was back in this very spot right here doing a full review of the tent that I had been using for well over a year. And if you remember at the end of that video, I mentioned that I was really looking to get a hard shell tent. And well, finally, I got a new tent, guys. I am really excited to share with you the Rome Adventure Company rooftop tent. Now. This is a prototype tent. They reached out to me and asked me if I would test it and run it through its paces. And so you cannot go buy this tent yet, but they will be doing pre-orders and have them for sale in the very near future. But already I can tell you that the quality is really nice. There are a three inch mattress inside. There's the vapor barrier on the bottom, all the seams and zippers, windows, everything, really good quality but just look how good it looks up there. I mean, it's low profile, it's nice hard shell on there. I don't have to worry about, you know, the dirty cover, taking it on and off and getting all filthy and what do I do with it anymore? It's just a couple of latches and this thing opens right up so easy to open it. I actually opened it like three or four times yesterday, just showing my wife and my kids. It's super easy to open and to close it, you just press down on one side, latch it up, press it down on the other side, latch it up, and it's done. It's really gonna be nice when we are hitting one spot and we're leaving early in the next morning and going to another spot, setting up camp, breaking down camp is gonna be really easy. Now, this is a little bit smaller, right? My other tent was a two to three person tent. Uh, I would say no more than two adults up there. It's a little tight, uh, but for me, uh, or me and my wife, when we get cozy up there, it's gonna be perfect. I am really happy with this tent. I'm so glad I got to upgrade. We will be doing a long-term review of this and I cannot wait to get out and start doing some camping with it and show you uh, how it is in action. All right, we got a couple other things to talk about. I honestly did not expect it to be so hot out here. That sun is beating down. My wife will kill me if I get sunburned. You guys should always carry sunblock, especially if you're out in the desert, guys. I just, hang on. Okay. All right, look, uh, many of you had hassled me for a long time for not running inner fender liners. And it was about six weeks ago that I finally got around to installing inner fender liners. Well, now with the new coilover setup and all the bracketry, inner fender liners that I installed don't fit. So I have new inner fender liners supplied by Icon Vehicle Dynamics, and I will try to get those installed. But did I mention I only got 48 hours left? So I'm trying to get those done before I leave, but you guys can hassle me until I get them done. The other thing that I've got sitting in the garage is some new rock sliders. Now I have been running the stock Rubicon rock sliders ever since I got my Jeep for over four years now, and they are tore up and banged up and scratched up, but they've done a great job. Uh, but it's time to, one, put something on there that looks a little bit nicer, and two, that'll give me a little more upward protection. Um, so I've got some Poison Spider rock sliders on there, and I will be installing those. And I was hoping to get them done before I leave, but probably gonna have to get them done once I get back from Easter Jeep Safari, which is gonna be kind of a bummer because I definitely gonna be using my rock sliders while I'm out there. But we'll be talking about those here very soon. So you wanna talk about procrastination? Well, when it comes to this rear bumper and installing some lights in these square holes, uh, that's something I've been doing really well. So if you remember, it's been how long now? I don't know, a year and a half, two years that I installed these bumpers. It's been a while. 
This was a prototype bumper. And so the brackets behind the hole here are actually taller than they should be for installing the KC G34 light. And so what I need to do is remove the bracket. I gotta cut it out, trim it down, re-weld it, and then I can install the light. And I've got the lights, they've been sitting on my workbench. It's just a matter of getting around to do it. I actually had uh, a buddy that was gonna help me last week. We were gonna finally do it and he was gonna help me re-weld it, get it all set up. But then I had to shift my attention to the suspension. So they're not gonna get done this week, uh, which means I'm gonna probably procrastinate a little bit longer, but I'm gonna get these done sooner than later. All right, let's talk about the drawer setup. All right, next up, I would like to give you an update on the rear storage system. And I know I've been talking about this uh, for uh, over a month now, uh, and it's just kind of been a slower process than we expected. It's a lot of work when you custom build something like this. And we've got at least, I don't know, three full days of just you know cutting and measuring, putting it together, taking it apart. Uh, this T-slot material, once you get to work with it, it becomes easier, but there is a lot that goes into building something like this. If I would have done just a single-sided drawer and, and a fridge over there on the other side, it would have been a lot easier, but because I'm doing drawers uh, on both sides, it's been a lot of work. So we've been waiting on materials and actually when I'm done filming this video, I'm going over to Marco's shop and we're gonna try to get a little more work done on this, but it's not gonna be complete before Easter Jeep Safari, but I will definitely have it done before Overland Expo. So if you're at Overland Expo, make sure you look for me. Uh, we'll have this all set up, it'll be ready to go. Uh, now, just a couple little things. Uh, once these drawers are done, uh, there's a black face on here now, but my plan is to do a bamboo face, which I think that's gonna be really cool because it will match the tailgate table. The drawer fridge, actually we've been using that quite a bit. It's been holding up really well. Uh, on top here, we're gonna put some carpet up there so things won't slide around. And I'm also gonna do some tracks up here uh, so we can, you know, clamp down some bags or something like that. It'll make it uh, pretty easy. We've got the sliders in here. These are 100 pound drawer sliders. And I think those are gonna work really well, but uh, we're gonna get some more work done on this here soon. And I have been filming all along the way. So I'll be sharing with you how this all went together, kind of how it was all designed. I just can't wait to get it finished, guys. Okay, look, uh, if you have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave a couple other videos up here. You go check those out. I've got a lot coming up here in the next couple weeks. So hopefully there'll be some more content here coming soon. Please remember to travel the trails responsibly and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Thanks for watching.